In this video, we're going to complete example two. We're going to represent the precedence table below as a network diagram. Some of you may have noticed that this particular precedence table is the same one we've used in an earlier example. The only difference being that this time we're constructing a network diagram. Now you really need some more room here if you want to create a network diagram. So I'm just going to make my presence table just a bit smaller here to give me some room. Now whenever we start a network diagram, we always need a starting point and we'll label a vertex to represent that starting point. And this time I'm going to call it the source just to be a little different rather than calling it the start. When we look at our precedence table, you'll notice that there are two activities, activities A and B, which have no immediate predecessors, meaning that these two activities must come out from the start vertex. So we'll use an edge to represent each activity, activity A and activity B. Remembering from the previous video that I don't want to finish each edge yet. I don't want to put a vertex down just yet. Now I have quite a few activities to get through on this president's table. So as I move along through this example, I'm going to tick them off. So far I've drawn activities A and B. So now moving on to activity C, we can see that activity C comes after activity B. So we need to complete activity B first, and we do that by drawing a vertex, and then activity C comes after that. So let's tick off activity C, and now look at activity D. Now activity D comes after activities A and C. So I'm just going to draw an edge for now to represent activity D. And in order for activity D to occur, any immediate predecessors need to finish. So they need to meet at this point preceding activity D. Because activities A and C are the immediate predecessors of activity D, both of them need to join at this point together. As I mentioned in the previous video, the reason I don't like to draw my vertex straight away is because sometimes I end up extending these edges. So we'll tick off activity D and now move on to activity E. Activity E comes after activity D. So we need to finish activity D with a vertex and draw an edge to represent activity E and then tick off activity E on our diagram. Now you may notice that both activities F and G come after activity E. So we'll finish activity E with a vertex and we're going to have two edges coming out of it. Activity F and activity G. Now that we've drawn activities F and G, we can tick them on the table. Now moving on to activity H. Activity H comes after activity F. So we need to finish activity F and draw an edge to represent activity H and also tick activity H. Next we have activity I which comes after activity G. So we finish activity G with the vertex and draw an edge to represent activity I. Finally, we have activity J. Activity J comes after two activities, activities H and I. If I was to draw an edge to represent activity J, I would need a vertex at the beginning of it to represent the completion of any immediate predecessors. And those immediate predecessors are activities H and I. So I need to extend those edges to meet at this point 
like so. We'll tick off the J and also we need to put a vertex at the very end to show the completion of our entire project. And rather than calling this the finish, I'm going to call it the sync, which is just another word which we use to represent the completion of our project. As I mentioned in the previous video, we like to have edges that are straight. And there are two edges we need to fix up here, edge A and edge C, which are curved edges. And it's quite easy to fix that by simply rubbing them out and redrawing them as a straight edge. So we have activity A, which is now a straight edge. And activity C, we'll draw that one as a straight edge as well. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.